Hi, we're not on the range today. We're at one of our training facilities, so please bear with a wide variety of extraneous noises in the background. And today we're talking about auto loaders versus revolvers, again. This is a topic that we have done to death, but people seem to never tire of it, so here we are, again. Today what we're talking about specifically is these two formats' comparative abilities to put more rounds downrange in less time. This is a subject that, again, has been done to death, and I have discussed and demonstrated ad nauseum. But I have recently been inundated with questions and requests for a demonstration on a particular aspect of that topic. So here we are. More on that in a minute. Now, recently I did a three-part series on double-action revolvers in their role as concealed carry, personal protection, home defense firearms. And in part three of that three-part series, I discuss and demonstrate at excruciating length the comparative abilities of the two formats to put more rounds downrange in less time and the relevance of that. So if you want the long version, you can watch that presentation. Today, we're going to discuss the very short version. And the short version is this. As far as which one can shoot faster, an autoloader or a revolver, for the first few rounds, which one is faster is far more dependent on the shooter, the target, and your caliber and ammunition choices than it is on just the simplicity of autoloader versus revolver. But when you get past the first few rounds, mainly past exhausting the capacity of the revolver, then the autoloader has a great advantage. Now, there are exceptions, of course, but for the most part, most revolvers have a capacity of five, six, seven, as where auto loaders very typically have capacities of 6, 7, 8, 10, 15, or more. Auto loaders hold a lot more rounds. And again, there are exceptions, but for the great majority of us, auto loaders can be reloaded significantly faster than revolvers. Beyond the first few rounds, auto loaders are going to be able to put more rounds downrange in less time. And that is a topic that I have discussed and demonstrated at great length. But that brings us to the specificity of today's topic. Many people have requested a demonstration on which format would be faster if there was a certain limitation put in place. Now, anytime we've demonstrated reloading, we've always done so assuming that your autoloader has a spare magazine. Assuming that your double action revolver has a speed loader. And people have asked, what if you didn't have those things? For your auto loader, you only had one magazine. For your double action revolver, you didn't have a speed loader. Then which would be faster? Well, in answering that, there's first a few questions we have to deal with, such as who, what, when, why, where, and how. Who would have an auto loader and only have one magazine? Who would have a revolver and never buy a speed loader for it? What could be the possible relevance of this discussion? When would anyone ever have only one magazine or no speed loader? Where would this be relevant? Why would this be relevant? How could this topic ever be relevant? Well, I can answer one of those questions right off the top. Why? The reason we're discussing this is because, as I said, I have been inundated with requests for a presentation on this topic. As far as the other questions, let me see if I can shed some light on that. Some people acquire auto-loading pistols by going to the gun store and buying them. There's a reality that goes with that. By the time people have owned their pistol for a long time, it is very common they've lost the original box, they've lost some of the accessories, and they've lost magazines. There are a lot of auto-loading pistols out there for which the person only owns one magazine. Now, going to the gun store and buying a handgun is easy enough, but that is not the way many people acquire auto-loading pistols. They acquire them secondhand, they trade for them, they inherit them. And it is very common that when someone gets a handgun secondhand or they inherit it, they don't get accessories and they only get one magazine. Now with that, why wouldn't someone just go buy more magazines? There are many reasons why someone might not. I'll cover what I consider to be the top four. The first one is cost. Let me show you an example. This is a Steyr GB caliber 9x19. When you buy it new, it typically comes with two 18-shot magazines. 
However, this handgun was only made for a relatively short time, quite some time ago, and they were never all that popular, so today additional magazines can be hard to come by. And today when someone inherits one of these, it very typically comes with one magazine. Well, if you get online, you can find other magazines for this pistol, and they typically cost $200. That is cost prohibitive for people who inherit guns like this. Sometimes people have one magazine because they can't afford to buy another one. Another problem is availability. For older, more obscure models, even if cost isn't a factor, just finding a magazine can be very difficult. A third reason people might only have one magazine are legal reasons. Now, I cannot quote chapter and verse of every firearms law in every country in the world, or every state or province in those countries, or every county or shire in those provinces, or every municipality in those counties. But we all know that firearms laws can vary greatly from one jurisdiction to the next. And in some places, there are laws put in place in such a way that make it okay for people to have certain things, but very difficult for them to obtain certain things. Now, an imperfect example would be, in the 1990s, when the Clinton administration passed Bill's Crime, or, no, excuse me, the Crime Bill, it did not ban high-capacity magazines, just banned the manufacture or importation of them. And so many people were put in such a position that they had certain things, but couldn't get more of them. And there are some places where firearms laws are written in such a way that if you have a certain thing, you're okay, but you can't get anything to replace it. The law can be a strange thing in many places. Now, the fourth reason why someone might only have one magazine for their auto-loading pistol is something I call laziness. Someone will get an auto-loading pistol, it comes with one magazine, and they have good intentions of acquiring more magazines, and then they just never do it. Let me tell you a couple of anecdotes. Someone I know about 25 years ago bought an auto-loading pistol in caliber 9x18, I think it was a Makarov, and it came with one magazine. He meant to get more magazines, but to this day, 25 years later, he still has the one magazine that came with it. He's just never gotten around to getting more. Someone else I knew bought an auto-loading pistol that came with two magazines, and then he lost one. He owned the pistol for a few more years, and he always had good intentions of getting another magazine, but he just never did. Just laziness. And these factors come together to create a situation where a lot of people only have one magazine for their auto-loading pistol. Now, for revolvers, the reasons are the same, but they're a little bit different. There are many reasons why someone would have a double-action revolver with a swing-out cylinder and not have a speed loader. There are three main reasons. Cost isn't such a big factor because often speed loaders only cost 10 or $20, but availability is a factor. There are some revolvers for which the right design of speed loader can be very hard to obtain. Another factor can be the law, but more often it's a matter of agency regulations or company policies. Now, let me see if I can explain that. I've talked to many security guards and police officers who have told me that in the days when they carried revolvers, they were prohibited from carrying speed loaders. Why? The only explanation I've ever gotten is that somebody told me that the agency he worked for, the higher echelons of command, considered that cartridge loops on the belt looked cooler than speed loader pouches. What reasons they may have had in other places, I don't know. But the bottom line of that is, there are certain conditions under which people have revolvers and they're prohibited from having a speed loader. Now, the third main reason that people won't have a speed loader is, again, laziness. They'll obtain a revolver, they mean to go get speed loaders for it, and they just never get around doing it. And I could bore you for a half an hour with anecdotes about people who just never got around to getting that replacement part, or that extra magazine, or that speed loader, or putting a new sight on their pistol, and the list goes on. Laziness is a factor that occurs. So now that we know that the situation does exist, that there are people out there carrying auto-loading pistols for concealed carry personal protection home defense that only have one magazine, and there are people out there who have revolvers for the same reasons that don't have speed loaders, the question comes up, with those parameters, which format can put more rounds downrange in less time? Well, let's shoot these two types side by side and see what we can learn about that. 
For today's comparison, the two handguns I'm going to start with are a Smith & Wesson Model 15 and Caliber 38 Special, and a Colt Government Model and Caliber 38 Super Auto. But in comparing the reload times of these two different formats, there are two very important things to take into consideration. First, if I were reloading an autoloader and I had the luxury of a spare magazine, the way I would reload would be rotate the pistol in my hand while reaching for my spare magazine, drop the outgoing magazine, putting the new magazine in. And I would do that while not looking at the pistol, while looking down range. But the pistol is in my peripheral vision, making it far easier to get the magazine into the magazine well. Now, for a revolver, if I had a speed loader, the way I would reload is dump the empties, reach for my speed loader, but it is very awkward for me to keep the revolver up here looking down range and have it in my peripheral vision while I reload with the speed loader. The way I'm going to do it is bring the revolver down here, continue to look down range, and reload by feel with the speed loader. Now if I were to reload the revolver with just loose ammunition, then again I would dump the empties and bring the revolver down here while reaching for my handful of rounds and I would continue to look down range while reloading without looking at the revolver. Therefore, if I had to reload the autoloader without a spare magazine, I would have to dump the outgoing magazine into my hand, stow the autoloader, reach for my rounds, and reload the magazine while looking down range. Now here's the problem with that. Reloading a revolver with loose ammunition while looking down range is something I've practiced a lot. Reloading a magazine with loose ammunition while still looking down range is something I haven't practiced a lot. So just for today's comparison, as I reload this magazine with loose rounds, I'm going to look at it. Therefore, in the interest of fairness, even though I'm an advocate of continuing to look down range while reloading your revolver, for today, as I reload this, just for this comparison, I'm going to look at the revolver while I reload it. That's not something I would typically do, but I'm going to do it now, just in the interest of fairness. Secondly, in the interest of fairness, we're comparing a six-shot revolver to an autoloader with a nine-shot magazine. So, to be fair, when I reload the revolver, I'm going to reload with six rounds, and when I reload the autoloader, I'll reload the nine-shot magazine with only six rounds. So, with all of that in place, let's get started. I've got my Colt government model loaded with one round in the chamber and an empty magazine. I'll shoot that one shot, reload with six, shoot one more shot, and we'll time how long it takes from the first shot to the second. Now let's try that with the revolver. Now I have my Model 15 loaded with five empty casings and one live round. Let's do the reloading drill with this. Not bad. Now let's do that drill again with two different firearms. This is a Smith & Wesson Model 63 caliber 22 long rifle and this is a Ruger Mark III caliber 22 long rifle. The revolver has an 8 shot cylinder and the autoloader has a 10 shot magazine. So to be fair, when I reload the autoloader, I'll reload the 10 shot magazine with only 8 rounds. And this time I have the revolver loaded with 8 live rounds and we'll just shoot all 8. Now let's try that with the autoloader. 
And I also have the autoloader loaded with eight. Clearly the revolver has a little bit of an advantage. So far it would appear that the revolver has the advantage, however that's me with the particular firearms that I'm using. Depending on the circumstances and the shooter and which autoloader versus which revolver, the autoloader could have several advantages, the revolver could have several advantages. The one circumstance where a revolver has a very clear advantage is doing a partial reload. Now the idea is that in the days when police officers and security personnel were carrying revolvers but they didn't have speed loaders, you'd shoot all six and then reload while looking down range. And if a threat manifested itself, you could close the cylinder on a partially loaded gun and at least shoot a shot or two. Now I've got my revolver loaded with five empty casings in one live round. Let's demonstrate that. Now let's try that with an autoloader. With the autoloader, because I have to stow the pistol somewhere while I'm reloading the magazine, the partial reload drill could be awkward. And now, the threat manifests itself. You can see how in that situation the revolver could have a very clear advantage. So if you're relegated to an auto loader with just one magazine or a double action revolver without a speed loader, there could be advantages to both platforms. But the one clear undeniable advantage to the revolver is the partial reload drill. However, there's also one clear undeniable advantage to the auto loader. Let me show you what I mean. Do I even need to elaborate on that? So as always, don't try this at home, I'm what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the Auto vs. Revolver If You Only Had One Magazine video.